Continuing to Episode 7, the Elf Village is currently being invaded by a large grey-colored creature. Initially, Goblin Slayer thought it was an elephant because its characteristics matched the Elf's description. However, the Elf disagreed, stating that the creature before them was a Mokul Mbembi, a river-blocking creature. Goblin Slayer quickly exited the house and gathered with the others. Fortunately, Priestess had already instructed the receptionist and the farm girl to stay in their rooms. Mokul Mbembi had a long neck, making it seem somewhat challenging to attack. The elf also declared that they must not kill it, it is a valuable creature, so their current choice is to guide it back to its habitat. As the creature approached, Goblin Slayer noticed something on its back, a goblin rider riding the creature. Goblin Slayer told the others to handle the goblins first before dealing with the creature. Suddenly, the elf's cousin arrived with a panicked expression, wondering why their guest was endangering themselves like this. The elf replied that such situations are common for them, so there's no need to worry. By jumping from the branches of large trees, the elf positioned herself perfectly to shoot arrows at the goblin rider. She successfully brought it down, and the goblin was crushed by the Mokul Mbembi. Next, they had to deal with the Mokul Mbembi. The lizardman unleashed his frightening magic, causing the creature to become fearful. Then, the dwarf seized the opportunity to use a sleep spell. Unfortunately, the spell seemed insufficient to make it fall asleep. It was Goblin Slayer's turn. He threw a smoke bomb into the creature's eyes to blind it temporarily. Then he asked the farm girl and the receptionist to fetch the large rope above. Goblin Slayer also instructed Priestess to be ready to heal the Moklumbem's wounds. Next, Goblin Slayer threw the rope in front of the creature. On one end, the rope was tied to a tree branch, and the other end bound the Moklumbem's legs, causing it to stumble. This way, they managed to make the creature collapse. Priestess and the dwarf quickly healed the wounds on the Moklumbembi. Although the goblin rider had already been crushed to death, Goblin Slayer seemed determined to make sure the goblin was truly dead. The elf's cousin approached him, knowing that the technique Goblin Slayer had just used was an ancient way to capture large animals. She was quite impressed that Goblin Slayer knew about it and wanted to know where he learned it. Instead of answering, Goblin Slayer asked if there were any other villages in the area. The elf's cousin replied that the elf village is the only one around. When Goblin Slayer seemed about to leave, the elf's cousin still insisted on getting an answer to her earlier question. Goblin Slayer then revealed that his father was a fisherman in the village, and that's it. When the night fell, the elf was lounging on a tree. Her elder sister elf came to reprimand her in Elvish. The elf found it ironic since her sister herself didn't attend the meeting. The elder sister elf asked if her younger sister would join them tomorrow. Previously, Goblin Slayer suspected there might be a goblin nest in this area, so he and the others would go hunting tomorrow. Similar to the elder sister elf's previous conversation, she reminded that human lives are short. Therefore, there's no point in continually following Goblin Slayer. The elf was aware of that. However, that's precisely what kept her by his side. Goblin Slayer might only live for a few decades or even die tomorrow. If it's that short, the elf would rather accompany him. The elder sister elf informed that parting with her would surely be painful. Still, the elf retorted that it probably wouldn't be that painful. She had also heard a saying from the dwarf that a hangover for two days is part of the pleasure of alcohol. Hearing the elf say that, her older sister gave up. Indeed, since the old days, her younger sister never listened to her words. Meanwhile, Goblin Slayer, the dwarf, the lizard man, and the elf's cousin were eating and drinking. According to the dwarf, the last night of backlerhood should be enjoyed by drinking together with the guys. However, the elf's cousin stated that their wedding would only take place in a few days. The lizard men then suggested considering this as a farewell party. When goblins were involved, Goblin Slayer had no choice but to slaughter them all. He wanted opinions on whether to attack their nest by land or water. Considering the heat issue in the forest, the lizard men suggested going through the river. The problem was with the raft. They also didn't have arrow shields. Regardless of the method, the elf's cousin still couldn't believe there were goblins nesting near the elf village. Goblin Slayer felt the same. Goblins might be foolish, but their minds are not empty. However, it's possible that the goblins are not clever enough to perceive elves as a threat. While the elves live leisurely, unbeknownst to them, there was a goblin nest near their home. On the other side, Sword Maiden was seen reading the inscription stone sent by Goblin Slayer. She finally knew the content of the writing on the stone. Sword Maiden then asked one of the nuns to prepare paper, a pen, and a pigeon. She wanted to send a letter to the Elf King. It's morning and Goblin Slayer is getting ready to depart. The farm girl, still in her pajamas, gets up to bid farewell. Of course, the farm girl and receptionist won't be joining this dangerous mission. 
The receptionist is already awake but stays in her room to bid farewell, saying she's embarrassed to be seen without makeup. The farm girl understands that feeling, but this time she wants Goblin Slayer to see her natural face. It might be the last time they meet. After that, Goblin Slayer goes to the river, where his companions are preparing various things on the boat. By the way, the boat is provided by the elf's cousin. Goblin Slayer also receives a potion from the elf's cousin. He thanks her and asks her to take care of the farm girl and the receptionist if he doesn't return. The elf's cousin warns him to be careful as it seems it will be foggy today. Suddenly, Goblin Slayer thinks of a plan. He asks the elf's cousin to prepare another boat. On the misty river, two hooded figures are on a boat, catching the attention of goblins watching the area. The goblins start shooting arrows and throwing stones at the boat. The two figures even get hit by arrows. However, the goblins are confused because the two figures seem fine and keep rowing the boat. At that moment, Goblin Slayer appears from behind to slit the goblins' throats. Behind the small boat with the two hooded figures, there is another quite large boat. The boat is occupied by the elf, priestess, dwarf, and lizard man. Previously, they hid behind the fabric to remain unnoticed, and it turns out the two figures in the front boat are the lizard man's dragon warriors. Seeing Goblin Slayer go ashore, the lizard man decides to follow him as well. Actually, Goblin Slayer didn't expect to encounter goblins this quickly, so he assumed that these goblins here were scouts because if these goblins were an ambush force, the method seemed less offensive. Regardless, he couldn't let these goblins live. After defeating the scout goblins, they get back on the boat and approach the goblin nest area. Priestess is shocked to see many skeletal remains on the way there. Shortly after, beyond the fog, they see an ancient building with high walls. They begin to ambush during the night. Some goblins are on guard outside, easily dealt with by the elf's arrows. They realize that the weapons the goblins recently had are of decent quality. The dwarf suspects that the goblins looted them because it's impossible for them to create it in this area. The soil is too wet to make a fire, and without a spell, it's impossible to work iron here. From the goblin they just defeated, fortunately, they find a key. On the key there's an adventurer rank emblem pendant. Strangely, the key doesn't match the entrance gate. The elf immediately wants to show off her skill at opening locks with the lockpick, and indeed, she manages to open the gate. Inside the ancient building, they found a very deep spiral staircase leading downward. Without hesitation, Goblin Slayer immediately descended the stairs. The others didn't expect Goblin Slayer to be so bold. When they reached the bottom, there was a water channel there. The Lizardmen suspected whether the goblins had thought of spreading poison through the water. Whatever it was, they needed to find out. After walking for a while, they entered a room. There they found the corpse of an elf, and its blood was flowing into the aforementioned channel. It's possible that the elves drank water contaminated with their own waste and blood. The Lizardmen speculated that it could be considered some kind of curse. Confirming Goblin Slayer's suspicion, it seemed that the one who captured the Mokul Mbembi was a spellcaster. After walking for quite some time, Goblin Slayer decided to rest here briefly. After saying a prayer for the corpse, they wrapped it in cloth and floated it down the river. At the moment, everyone else was asleep except for Goblin Slayer and the elf. Goblin Slayer suddenly apologized because, in the end, it was a goblin problem again. The elf immediately laughed, not expecting Goblin Slayer to apologize for that. The elf indeed didn't want to eradicate goblins, but this was her homeland. Moreover, her sister was getting married, and she didn't want goblins near here. After that, the elf told Goblin Slayer to focus on sleeping for now. She would wake him up when it's time. She also emphasized that Goblin Slayer should sleep with his eyes closed. After leaving Goblin Slayer, the elf saw Priestess sleeping fitfully. It seemed she was having a bad dream. While comforting her, the elf also took a rest beside her. 